Hello, I'm Tom Bailey and in today's speaker stories episode, I'll be getting to know Andy Hanselman, who is an internationally recognized speaker on the topics of business competitiveness and differentiation. He's an author of three books and I understand he's currently writing his fourth, um, which I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk about today as we dive into this conversation. So Andy, hello and a very warm welcome to today's episode. Hi Tom, how are you doing? Good to hear yeah. you, good to see you. Very good, and thank you so much for being here. And just out of interest for all of our listeners, um, and I can see it on the wall next to you, but whereabouts are you based? I'm in sunny Sheffield, uh, based in our offices in Sheffield, and uh, but work all over the place, but Sheffield is home. That's, that's the hub, fantastic, thank you so much. And I would like to just share a little bit more about you before we do get started with the questions. So Andy helps businesses, their leaders, and their people to create competitive advantage by thinking in 3D which means being dramatically and demonstrably different from their competitors. He has over 30 years researching and leading in this space, and he speaks at conferences and events all over the world. And that brings me nicely onto my first question. So Andy, I've mentioned that you speak on the global circuit now, and I'd love to know, were you always a naturally confident public speaker or was it something you had to learn? It's definitely something I had to learn. Um, I can remember, to be honest, I didn't even know there were public speakers many, many years ago. I was, yeah. But I do remember my distinct first sort of time having to do it was I was at university and I applied to be the social secretary of our mining society uh, club, which basically meant I had to organise getting people together on a Sunday morning to play football. Yeah. And the way they did it, they actually encouraged you to, your friend nominated you and you had to do a little speech in front of your mates. It was a Friday lunchtime. I can distinctly remember it. And sort of literally going, Pardon? and I was all over the place. Yeah. And it was, my legs were wobbling. I didn't even want to think about it now. I can still remember that time. Um, luckily, they nominated me because there was nobody else. Yeah. Um, but I got the job. But I, I realised then that maybe I wasn't a natural public speaker. And, and did that spur you to want to get better at it was, was that I guess embarrassing yourself in front of your friends or, or feeling nervous did that spur you on a little bit yeah if I was very lucky and I, and I look back and the, the guy who was the professor of the department he actually got us to do a public speaking training course it was a day brilliant and they gave us a little card with some key things and it was about preparation it was about planning it was about performing and I used that forever just sort of learning those things but one of the things that they they said to us right at the beginning is and I'm sure you've heard it, most people are scared of public speaking. Yeah. And, and one of the things that they sort of said to us at the time was, just imagine that most of the people who are actually listening to you, particularly when you're at university, they're just going, thank goodness that's not me. <laughs> yeah. And to my, to my mates, you know, my, my society, they weren't there to see me fail. They wanted me to, to get on with it. But I got in my head this, Ooh, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's a really, really good point. And a lot of the fear, I think, personally, comes from this fear of what other people's opinions might be um, but the reality is we don't know what their opinions might be we build up this big picture of what what they might be thinking but they're probably not thinking that absolutely and the other thing I mean I every now and then I'm asked to coach people in, in presentation skills and, I, and I'm not particularly an expert in that and I'll just give them some guidance but one of the things that I say to people is that people go oh I got that wrong well I say well people didn't recognize that people didn't know it or, I didn't say that well people didn't know what you're going to say so they don't know you didn't say it and again, sometimes we beat ourselves up about maybe how we come across rather than how, how do people see us? Yeah, we, we, we definitely put a lot more emphasis on our own mistakes than anybody else would even realise. That's a really, really important point. Um, so that's talking about the, the, the kind of early stages. Now, I also want to talk about how important public speaking is for, for, for leaders and for business people, for entrepreneurs. So. This podcast is called Succeed Through Speaking for a reason. How important do you think public speaking is in business? I think it's very, very important. It never fails to amaze me because I because I do speak at company conferences and mm -hmm. sometimes you you listen to the managing director, the chief exec or the FD, and they're awful. Yeah. And they are consistently awful, but either nobody tells them, nobody sits down, or they don't actually learn to develop mm -hmm. the skills. Uh, I was once speaking at a conference many years ago and I was sat I got there early to hear what's going on and all the all the audience were there and the MD was doing his annual speech and everybody every now and then was going yeah. and I discovered that there was like this almost like bullshit bingo that they yeah. expected to say <laughs> and there's a sweep step on how long it's going to take and it went really well for me after I honestly couldn't go any worse because because he wasn't that good yeah but they actually asked me the next year to speak again at the conference and I said is the MD going to do his thing and I went yeah I said can I have a word with him 
Mm. And I just sat him down and talked to him. And what I actually did on that, I actually, they asked me to host the, the conference. Um, I just interviewed him rather than do a presentation. Yeah. And people went, wow. He's, and it was his fear was just he got into the sort of complete phrase and, and, and couldn't present. And he then had some proper coaching, not from me, but from a proper coach to help him do this. And I, and I really encourage people to, to get, to learn from the people early on, just have a go and try it and, and but get people to just give you some constructive feedback. That's one of the key things for me. I love that. And you made a really good point about that concept of being interviewed um, because questions generate content in our brains. You know, we don't necessarily need to write a script and learn it word for word because as long as we know our stuff and we're asking, we're asked the right questions. Yeah. Magically, that content will will come to the front of our mind. And, and, and it's very interesting because I often hear people say, "Oh, Andy, I'm scared of speaking." And I might have a conversation with people. Well, I said, "Well, what? With two people? Five people? Well, if you have a conversation with ten people, yeah, that's fine. Well, what about twenty? Hey, if you're in a, and there's something in our head that sort of goes, if we're on the podium, mm-hmm. it changes it. And I actually say to people, maybe this is about just having conversations with people, getting it in your head." That that's what you're going to talk about and you don't have to do thousands of powerpoint charts and just talk but just engage with people is a key thing for me exactly and i've actually been taught before because i had a very similar challenge previously about playing two roles on the stage you can actually be the interviewer and the interviewee by yeah. just asking yourself questions for example and what do i mean by that well let me tell you there's a good opportunity as well to do that and it really helps you do and um, run through your presentation yeah absolutely um, you know, one of the key things I encourage you to think about is which means that. So you say something, which means that. So you might be in love with your own story, but the mm-hmm. which means that bit is gives you a chance to think what do other people, what does it mean for them, and how do you actually encourage them to to think about that? Yeah, definitely. And that little trigger will will generate that content from your brain. So yeah, great, yeah. great tip. So let's. So we've talked about the beginning. I guess that first opportunity and um, to speak at university. What, what's next? You know, what, what was the guess the first business context presentation that you had to deliver? I, I, I ended up working for a, for a small consulting business and we did ongoing consultancy, but we also used to run courses for people setting up businesses. Mm-hmm. And, and I actually got a call from Jeff, one of the directors, and he said, Andy, you need to go to Chesterfield and run a session this evening. He said, I'm stuck in Newcastle. Yeah. I need you to do it. I said, well, what's it all about? He said, it's about cash flow forecasting. I said, well, I know nothing about cash flow forecasting. It's all right. He says, I'll teach you. Wow. Yeah. And over the phone, he gave me these notes. And to be fair, it was quite an interactive session where they had to take notes and work on something. Um, but I did it and I loved it and I enjoyed it. And, and, and I obviously did a bit of practicing before. I had an afternoon to try and go to it. And it worked. And I thought, I like this. And got more and more into it. Then started running some of those courses for people starting up businesses and, and, and learned a lot by just having a go in front of people. It's a great way to light the fire is just do it, you know, um, yeah. even if it goes wrong, you make a few mistakes, you know, just do it, take that first step. And well, yeah, as I say, you make mistakes. A lot of people don't see the mistakes. They don't know it was a mistake. Mm-hmm. And it's only ourselves. that's And I'm not saying we shouldn't take some time out to review and work what went well, what didn't go so well. But I think sometimes we, we beat ourselves up. Um, yeah. But actually, people didn't see it. And yeah. yeah, have a go. Try it. Yeah. So, so we've already given some great value and, and advice to, to listeners. But when you think back to that presentation about the cash flow forecasting, what was the one thing that you'd wish you'd known back then that you know, you know now? Um, I think one of the things was that the people in the audience were glad it wasn't them stood up there doing it. Yeah. B, they didn't know much about it. So giving them the process to help make it work, I could get across. And the other one was, to be honest, actually, look, I don't know the answer to that. Mm. Um, I, you know, I actually explained what I was doing, why I was doing it. Um, but they actually went, no, it worked well. You, you got across the message. Thanks very much indeed. So again, maybe part of it again was just maybe having faith in my own ability to, to do that. But yeah. there's that fine line between sort of, you know, I don't want to be arrogant about stuff, but yeah. actually being confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think first key point there for me was that changing perspective, you know, take the spotlight off you as the speaker to the audience. What value yes. can you add to them? And um, I think that second point about, as long as you're one step ahead of the audience in terms of what you know, and yeah. you, you can add value, and that's really important. And yeah. then um, the third point I've, I've forgotten, but there was definitely a third point. Well, in there. Just a quick one on that. Somebody once gave me a tip. When somebody, if somebody asks you a question, and um, if you're in an audience, ask a question. If you're not sure of the answer straight away, you go, that's a good question. What does anybody else think? Mm, yeah. 
get other people's thoughts and views. If there is somebody in there that knows about it, you can agree with them. Mm -hmm. But it also gives you a bit of time to think. And equally, sometimes I think it's okay to say, I don't know, but I'll find out. Yeah. Provided, obviously, you're not there. If it's a question that you should know because you're, you're the expert in it, mm -hmm. that's different. But, you know, don't, don't be afraid just to see what the people think and, and engage and interact with people. Yeah, perfect. And, that, and that's, I think, one of the big fears for people starting out is what happens if, I don't know the answer, what happens if I forget what I'm about to say? And those kinds of things really do scare people. So um, next question from me yep. is we've talked about the beginnings, you know, people who are a little bit apprehensive, maybe just thinking about speaking. What about the other end of the scale then? So let's say there's somebody out there that's done a couple of presentations, they've started to get comfortable with it. They really want to pursue a career as a paid speaker. What advice have you got for them? Um, I think a couple of things for me, and this is probably any business, but you've got to decide what is it, who, who are you, what, what do you want to talk about? Yeah. Um, and I know I've certainly been criticised in the past and I've been guilty of it, of maybe being a generalist sometimes. Um, so maybe I, I go maybe too far in one direction in terms of what I'm about, why, what differentiates me. So that's one of the things I would actually sort of say, why you? Why yeah. would somebody come to you? So what is it in terms of you want to speak about and then how are you going to do it? Um, because in terms of what you're going to speak about, you can Google it, you'll find there's lots of other people speaking about something similar. Yeah. And then it's, well, why you? What, what differentiates you from the other people that, that speak about these things? And again, I'd argue sometimes that takes time yeah. to, to, to work it out. Um, but it's actually about maybe asking people, why did they choose you? What did they see in you? What was important? And get feedback from people to give you a feel for what you are doing well and what people want to hear. Yeah, absolutely. I think one, one key point on that, um, what differentiate you is, is your story, you know, what, why did you end up being so passionate about this topic? And if you can tell that story that you've been through, nobody else can have that because that's, that's your story. Absolutely. And, and that is this, this is the basis we talk about being dramatically and demonstrably different. Yeah. It's thinking in 3D. What is your dramatic difference? And then how do you demonstrate it? Yeah, got it. And, and, and that just could be one little thing. Like I say, it could be your story. It could be your expertise. It could be your focus in a particular marketplace. But it's about being very clear about what that is and maybe what it isn't. And, and I certainly know in the past I've been guilty of maybe going too far the other way and taking on things that maybe I shouldn't have done. Yeah, yeah. I think I've been told before, if, if you try and be everything for everyone, you end up being nothing for no one. So, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. get, get Absolutely. your lane, become an expert in it and, and you know, yeah. find that niche. Fantastic. Um, we've talked about some resources that you've used along the way. So from mentors to the one day public speaking course. Is there anything else that's helped you along the way? Any particular books, courses, resources, podcasts, anything at all? I think certainly for me, um, just TEDx. I love yep. TEDx videos. I'm sure lots of people do. And again, what I will sometimes watch that in, in two ways. I will watch them for the content. But there are other times where I will literally just watch for the presentation style, what they yep. do, how they do it. And, and, and that equally then goes to the same way. I'm quite lucky if I speak at conferences and events, I get to watch and see other speakers. And, and again, I think I would encourage people to try and watch it with a perspective of the stage, how they do it, what they do, how they pause, how they ask questions. So not necessarily about their content, but their style. And just seeing other people do it, you know, and again, I distinctly remember many, many years ago, seeing Tom Peters speak at an event. Mm -hmm. um, and he just blew me away completely. I remember sort of thinking, I want to be him. Of course, I never yeah. am, never will be. But you can learn from them. So one of the things I often do if I'm reading, so if I'm watching other speakers, I have two columns in my notes. One is the things they're talking about. I also write notes about how they do it. How they do it, yeah. And just take notes from that and, and learn because there's some great people doing some brilliant stuff. Yeah, and you can take the best bits from lots of different speakers then apply Absolutely. your own style. And, yeah. yeah, and I think that's the key bit, your own style. Keep it to the way you do it. So it's just not about following them and copying them. Mm -hmm. But are the little things that they do you go that was good could I build that in can I use that and can I, can I make it work for me I think that's one of the big mistakes that I made early on is I had this weird limiting belief about having a Wolverhampton accent and you know I thought if I sound more like x and if I look more like him and I act more like him then I'm more likely to be able to come as speaker but that took me down the completely wrong path and it, it's more about authenticity and just being yourself isn't, isn't it really? completely one of the things I know certainly if I'm if I'm if I'm speaking abroad, I know I have to slow down. I have to yeah. really speak much slower. Mm -hmm. um, 
But equally, sometimes if I'm speaking in London, they don't always understand the northern accent. So yeah. I have to slow down. And it's just that conscious thing. But I think ultimately, it's, this is who you are. Don't, don't try and fake it. Yep. 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 I love that. And, that, and that's, again, nobody else can be you. So just be, be, yeah, yep. be the best. There's only one you. There's only one you. Exactly. And um, topical question. We had a pretty big global pandemic 2019 and um, wiped out keynote speaking, stage speaking. How did you personally transition during this period? It, it was quite interesting because literally my diary emptied yeah. on the 22nd of March, whatever, whatever that date was. And, and the way Jill, my wife, were in business together as well. So she tends to do the networking side of it. So suddenly our diary was just emptied for, well, for six months. Yeah. Um, we did lots of stuff online, just engaging people, but being blunt, not earning any money. Yeah. A um, couple of things it forced us to do. We developed some online training courses, mm -hmm. which we have just about to launch. And good. we've actually got those ready to go and they're, they're sort of getting out and about, which is quite good. And then we did find that, yes, more and more people said, well, let's try virtual, let's have a go. And, and, and again, it was quite interesting. I had a, I'm on the book to a number of speaker agencies and I got one speaker agency said, Andy, we need a 20 minute video for this particular virtual conference that we're doing. You pre-record it, um, could you do it for us? This is the fee. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, yeah, that's pretty good. 20 minutes work in virtual commerce. Mm -hmm. Did it, sent it off to them. And even then I kept thinking, well, is this going to be okay? And the check came through and I went, actually, this is quite, a I like interacting and being with people. Yeah, yeah. But if, you know, you've got to find a way of, of doing it. One of the one of the downsides of doing the virtual stuff is that, you know, if you tell a few jokes, people you don't hear people laughing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you don't know what the reaction is if it's something you have to just record into a camera. Yeah. But you know, I'm just trying to find the balance. I would much yeah. prefer to speak face to face, but recognize that more and more organizations are saying let's do it virtually. And I've got to make sure that I'm up for doing that. So yeah. so yeah, I am. And and I guess one of the benefits, you know, you don't even have to leave your house to do a big events conference or video you know you exactly make, it. Make, exactly money, it. make money wearing your pajamas um so last question just on that topic is do you think the virtual events are here to stay or do you think that the world's looking to really bounce back into physical in-person conferences i think without doubt they are here to stay i was at an event last week um with a group of speakers and and you know there was a, an expert on on the speaking world and he was saying yeah Virtual speaking is here to stay. Yeah. Lots of lots and lots of companies and organisations are saying, look, we don't have to be able to be together. We can do it virtually. I think they do more of them. Mm -hmm. They do more short, sharp ones yep. rather than big company events. And it's not either or. For some, they're doing a mix. Mm -hmm. But I Hybrid, think it's, yeah. it, there is definitely clearly more virtual. It's not going to go away. Um, and therefore, you've got to try and embrace both. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, so before I ask my last question, I want to just quickly ask about the book as well, because I know you're in the process of writing that. Um, and yeah. what's the book on and when's it going to be available? Well, the, the book is um, on leadership and, and particularly leadership. We talk about being dramatically different. We've identified eight characteristics, if you like, of, of 3D leaders. And, mm -hmm. and again, people say to me, Andy, it's common sense stuff, and it is. But it's going to put it into a model and a template that people can use and, and yeah. can read. So I'm working on it. Um, I set myself deadlines and then failed. Um, mm -hmm. So very often the, the thing that got me, my last one was that a client actually asked me to speak at a conference and they said, we want 250 copies of your book yeah. in four months time. So it made me write yeah. it and get it finished and get it sorted. So I'm hoping the same is going to happen here, but it's going to be this year sometime. We'll have it out. Excellent. Fantastic. And for those people that have really enjoyed this conversation, want to find out more or even want to book you as a speaker, where can people connect with you online? The best place to go is the very imaginative title, andyhanselman.com. Right. Um, but I, I'm LinkedIn, I'm Andy Hanselman, on Twitter, I'm Andy Hanselman. So anything on that you'd find us. And please, please do get in contact. And any questions, comments, I'll do all I can to, to help people out. Really appreciate that. What I'll do for you, Andy, as well as I'll put all of those links in the show notes so people can just click on them and dive right in. So thank you so much again for your time, sir. I really appreciate you coming along and sharing such great value with our audience. Thanks so much indeed. And keep doing it.